There was once a tribe in these plains. The name of this tribe was Borjigin and its chief was Yesogai. More than 800 years ago, this tribe clashed with Tatars. An important Tatar chieftain was arrested in battle. His name was Temujin. In chains, Temujin was standing before the chief of the Borjigin tribe. At this time Yesogai received the news of his son's birth. Yesogai named his son Temujin after the same prisoner. When Temujin was born, he had a blood clot in his hand. According to the legend, when the tribal elders came to know about it Dot the predicted that the boy will become a great conqueror in future. This is the story of the same child Temujin who is known to the world as Genghis Khan. This is the river Onon. It flows through Mongolia into Russia. Centuries ago, Mongol tribe lived somewhere along the banks of Esemi rivers. The ancient Mongols believed that all Mongols were descendants of a wolf living along the same river. About 850 years ago, a Mongolian horseman was hunting with his falcon near the river. He was the leader of the Borjigin tribe, Yes sir guy during the hunt, he suddenly saw a cart. A person from the Merkit tribe was driving this car. When Yes sir guy went close, he saw a 16 year girl sitting in the cart. He fell in love with the girl and wanted to marry her. Yes sir guy attacked the man with his two brothers. The man had no power or will to fight so. He left behind the girl who was his wife and fled. The girl belonged to another tribe elk hound, her name was Holun. Now she is in the custody of Yesogai. Yesogai married her. Around 1162 AD, she gave birth to a child. He was named Temujin. Temujin means blacksmith. At this time, Mongol tribes were backward. They were nomads. They wandered from one meadow to another. They were expert hunters and shot at their prey and enemy with accuracy from horseback. Young Tamujin also learned horse riding and archery. When he was nine years old, his father betrothed him to a ten years old girl Borti. Yes Ogai left Tamujin with his in-laws on their request and returned home. But he advised them to keep Temujin away from dogs. On his return journey, he felt thirsty and found some Mongols feasting near a mountain. These were Tartary people who were his enemies. But he was sure nobody would recognize him here. He thought that he would leave after eating and drinking some water, he joined the feast. It was Mongol tradition to welcome strangers in a feast. But yes a guy falsely believed that nobody would recognize him. Someone in the feast recognized him. He also informed the other people about it. Tata gave yes a guy poisoned food. Instead of fighting. Yes a guy left the feast thinking he had a wonderful time there. But on the way his condition started to deteriorate and he understood. The poison was beginning to show its effects yet he somehow reached home. On the third day of poisoning, he breathed his last in his tent, but before he died, he told his people that he was poisoned by Tartats. When Yesogai died, it was a problem who would be the new chief of the tribe. This small nomadic tribe followed its tradition, they only accepted a powerful man as their leader. They refused to accept the leadership of his wife and young sons. Rather they abandoned them and left. By that time Temujin had also returned from his father-in-law house. He and his mother tried to stop the tribe, 
but they could not stop anyone except the few loyalists. The remaining people now lived by the river. They relied on fishing and hunting birds for food. They made arrows from wood and knuckle bones and war garments made from the skins of mice and dogs. This was a very difficult time for the family Temujin. These hardships made Temujin hard and cruel. He struggled for food and faced many dangers. One day he fought his half-brother Bekta. His half-brother stole his bird, Temujin was so ruthless when the same brother stole his fish, Temujin killed him with an arrow. Temujin was the eldest of his five siblings. He also had two half-brothers. He had killed one of them. So Temujin was now head of his family at a very early age. Other people informed his breakaway tribe that Temujin was getting stronger and that he has special qualities. He could also try to reclaim the leadership of his tribe. Perhaps it was this fear that one day some people of his tribe attacked his camp. But Temujin and his companions were ready for this attack. They had built a strange fence around their camp. Temujin had a chance to escape. He rode a horse and fled to the jungle when the attackers saw him fleeing, they chased him. Now Temujin was running for his life. Somehow he reached a nearby forest and hid in it. His enemies surrounded that part of the jungle and waited for his return. The secret history of the Mongols says Temujin spent three days and three nights in the forest without food. On the fourth day he decided to move out but as he stepped out, the horse's saddle fell. He saw it as a divine signal. So he turned back and hid again. He spent three more days in the jungle. We will show in the next episode of the Genghis Khan mini-series what happened next. If you like our videos and subscribe to the channel for more interesting series thanks for watching.